Hey, this is Andrew Brown from Exam Pro, and we are looking at Azure Storage Services, starting with Azure Blob Storage. So um, I would describe this as object serverless storage. So if you ever heard of object storage or serverless storage, this is going to make sense to you. So you're able to store very large files and, and large amounts of unstructured files. Uh, and the idea here is that you pay for only what you store. Uh, it's basically unlimited storage. You don't have to resize the volumes. You don't have to worry about file system protocols. You just upload files. Uh, and that's why it's considered serverless storage. Then we're going to move on to Azure Disk Storage. This is the most common type of storage uh, you'll encounter. Um, so you, we can describe it as a virtual volume. So you're just choosing either an SSD or an HDD. So it's basically a hard drive in the cloud. Uh, it has encryption by default and uh, it's attached to uh, virtual machines. So anytime you're spinning up a virtual machine, uh, it's probably spinning up also uh, Azure Disk Storage attached to it. Then you have Azure File Storage. So this is a shared volume that you can access and manage like a file server. So it's going to use a uh, protocol such as SMB. The reason you'd want this is that let's say you had multiple virtual machines, multiple servers, and you wanted them to all share the same uh, uh, hard drive. Uh, that's what you'd use it for. Or if you need to have users access it using those protocols, that's another way of doing that. Uh, then you have Azure Queue Storage. Now I put an asterisk in front of it because this is just a weirdly named service um, because this is really uh, for a, a messaging queue. This is actually for application integration, but I list it here because they put the word storage on it. So I just think it's poorly named. Um, and even the way they describe it is, is just makes you think it's storage, but it's a data store for queuing and reliably delivering messages between applications. So it's just be, uh, uh, integrating two applications together, passing messages along. Another one that's confusing is Azure Table Storage. I would put this in the database categories and it's a NoSQL database. And specifically, it's a wide column NoSQL database. Uh, and as they describe, it's a NoSQL store that hosts unstructured data uh, independent from any schema. So just be aware of those two. They're just very poorly worded. Um, then you have Azure Data Box, uh, and also its upgraded version, the Azure Data Box Heavy. This is a rugged briefcase computer and storage designed to move terabytes or petabytes of data. So imagine um, uh, somebody uh, shows up at your door with this, uh, this tower that's a computer, and you plug in your USB or whatever um, uh, whatever you want, and you transfer all your files locally on your on-premise data center, and then they they ship it because it's faster to ship the data on a physical piece of device than it is to send it over the internet. That's what Azure Data Box is. Uh, and then we have Azure Archive Storage. So this is long-term cold storage for when you need to hold onto files for years, but you want the cheapest storage options. If you have lots of data and it's not it's not doing anything, you definitely want to be uh, putting it on the cheapest possible. Uh, storage devices. Cheap meaning um, uh, doesn't mean that they're not reliable, just means that they're not active, the disks are not act actively spinning. Nobody's accessing the data on those uh, hard drives. The last one is Azure, uh, Azure Data Lake Storage. And so this is a centralized repos repository that allows you to store all uh, structured and unstructured data at any scale. When you're working with big data from multiple different sources and you need it to be in one place, that is the service for you. And so that is the Azure Storage Services.